I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 16th of January, 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leo, Nicaragua. Today we had some questions about what it is like getting healthcare here in Nicaragua, and presumably it's mostly about what it's like living here and having to use the healthcare system, but this would apply in many ways to tourists as well. You may be uh, worried about what would happen should something happen to you while you're here in the country. So we're going to talk about that on today's show. Very windy today, so I apologize for any wind noise that there may be going on. It's a little bit tough to get away from. I have a very tight schedule this week, so we're struggling to get the show up. But thanks to the new Fuji camera, we're able to produce the show a lot faster and more easily. So I'm very thankful for the timing on that. That has worked out very well. We're again on the TT Artisan today. This is going to be my main lens. I think I'm really liking the overall look of it. I have a, sounds like a storm, but it's actually a truck in the background. We're into the windy season very little rain this time of year here in Nicaragua it is dry for a large portion of the year and uh, we get during certain portions of the dry season this incredible amount of wind and that is where we are right now in late January so the question comes up is healthcare in Nicaragua a lot like the United States presumably in ways like and this is mentioned specifically uh, things like would the same antibiotics be used or things like that should you become like basically ill and that answer is quite simple yes Sometimes the names are changed. Sometimes we use generics instead of uh, um, whatever they're called, uh, appropriados or whatever, when they're when they're not generic. But um, we we are generally using the same drugs exactly. So um, if you're used to using ibuprofen, you'll use the same thing. If you're using acetaminophen, you use the same thing. Uh, if I'm to have a streptococcal infection, I would use amoxicillin. I can go to the store and get amoxicillin. Uh, so for the most part, those are the same. We do have, and this is important a more limited supply of drugs here than in a market like the United States, who probably has more medicine than anywhere in the world, which is both good in that there's variety and bad, that it is a huge uh, market for pushing drugs where they're not necessary. Here, there's a lot less pushing because no one's really making a lot of money selling drugs. First of all, no one manufactures them here, uh, but also, I mean, some minor things like sinus spray is made here. There's a few things, but really basic stuff. But if you're looking for real medicine, it's coming from abroad. So there's no big profit here uh, and they are sold at incredibly low prices generally. So the profit in selling it is not very high. It's much more like selling a candy bar than it is like selling drugs in the United States. So there isn't a huge financial incentive for people to push you to buy drugs you don't need or more drugs than you need or whatever. Uh, that whole problem that places like the US face doesn't really exist here. So, uh, and the system is much easier. If you want to get access to anything short of a controlled narcotic, you simply go into the pharmacy and tell them what you need. If you have a doctor's note, great, you can just hand it to them and they will work from that. Um, and they use real doctor's notes that are legible and safe here. You don't need to have encoded in the scribble. That's why they scribble in the United States is both uh, on one side, it is a form of encryption. It is very hard to duplicate a doctor's scrawl, um, but also it is a uh, indemnification against uh, 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 medical malpractice claims it's very hard to sue someone who clearly wrote nothing actually at all and that's a real thing right you write gibberish let the pharmacist handle it and if something goes wrong you can blame the pharmacist and say you wrote whatever you like uh, so there you don't have those things if you're going to get a prescription it'll be legible uh, it'll be sensible it'll be straightforward you just, it's exactly what you expect a prescription to be and not what you get in the united states uh, but most of the time you don't need that either because you simply don't need it, right? If I have strep infection, I don't need to see a doctor. I just need to go get amoxicillin. I know that, they know that. We don't need all this, this pretense of, of pretending that we're doing something else. I'm gonna go get the medicine that I need, um, which I almost never do, right? It's very rare, uh, but uh, should that happen, I don't need to go through a bunch of rigmarole to get it. Or if I'm going to uh, talk to a doctor first, which is absolutely fine, right? I would talk to the doctor, find out what I need, and then just go to the pharmacy. I don't have to have a prescription, because I can just tell them what I want or what I need, what the doctor wants. And because it's not controlled, I don't have to prove that a doctor said it, even though they did. So if you want to follow the process you're used to in the United States, absolutely, that's fine. That gives you an extra check and balance. But if you just want to go to the pharmacy and get those things, you can just do that, which is great because it's late at night, you know what, what you need. You can just stop into any number of pharmacies. And there was another question that I'm not addressing on this particular episode about why there's so many pharmacies and you can always get to one. We'll talk about that in a future episode, but I have not forgotten you. It is on my FAQ list of things. Um, but uh, you can go, you know, we have, I don't know, maybe eight that are walking distance from where we live. 
and I can just go into them and they, they will have different selections. It's not like the US where everyone has nearly everything, which is unfortunate, but we also have free home delivery. So if I don't feel like walking down to get it, um, I can just go on an app on my phone, see what they have in stock, order it, and a guy on a motorcycle will stop by in a few minutes and drop it off for me at no charge, which is fantastic. So uh, we have a lot of options, it's very simple. So if that kind of stuff is what you're doing, medicines, yeah, it's basically the same with a little bit less selection. It would be not completely unlike going to pharmacies in a small village in the United States, where they have a decent selection, but they certainly aren't gonna stock everything. And if you needed something special, you may be out of luck, you may have to go somewhere else to get it, you may have to order it, whatever. So dealing with straight up medicine is very, very simple. This is one of those things that when people move here, they're just, if they're coming from North America, it blows them away how simple it is. You suddenly have almost no expense and no effort and you can go 24 hours a day. Not in our neighborhood, we have to go downtown for 24 hour, but if we need it, we have 24 hour pharmacies, uh, not that far away, maybe two, three miles and uh, it, it's so easy. Just walk in, get what you need. That is so unlike the American system. We have medicine in minutes, whereas in the United States, it could take days by the time you get an appointment, get it and see a doctor, get results, get approval, get a prescription, find a place that has it, get it filled and go pick it up. It's this really convoluted process that takes a lot of time. If you're feeling sick, you you might spend two to 24 hours waiting to get that medicine uh, that if you need it, you need it. And here you may be waiting five minutes, 10 minutes to do the same thing. You can do it right now, 24 hours a day, anywhere you don't have to wait for them to fill it. I've, at least not, I've never known that to happen. So always just walk in and get it in just a couple minutes. Um, and it, you know, it's just such a simple system. That alone just blows people's minds. It is so just, I can, I can just do this and it's so cheap. Like it's great, it's cheaper for almost all things than the cost of copays in the US. If you have, you know, medicine plans or whatever, this is cheaper than that and you don't have to pay anything for it, right? Uh, under most circumstances, there's gonna be exceptions. It's just, it's amazing how well it works. If you need to see a doctor, which a lot of you should, I'm not saying you should skip doctors and just go to the pharmacy and get yourself self-medicated most of the time. However, if you are from the United States, you are very aware that much of the time our self-medication is less and safer and more well thought out than what you get from a doctor. That is certainly not always the case. There's some amazing doctors who provide you a lot of insight that you couldn't do on your own but there's also a lot who provide a lot less than you do do on your own. And it is important to have the options to know when you're able to self-medicate and when you need to see a doctor and get advice. It's both are important, but the United States lacks that one system and arguably the far more valuable one. Here you have that option, but certainly you're gonna to wanna to see doctors. So you have a very similar system to the United States or at least what it was in say the 1950s and 60s. You have the small town general practitioners all over the place. It is relatively easy. I suggest obviously that you have a doctor while you're well so that when you're sick, they have a baseline, they know who you are and you have someone on call so you're ready to deal with something right away. Of course, general smart medical stuff uh, applies um, we don't have much of the walk-in clinics here. We absolutely do have them, but it's not like the U.S. where um, as a foreigner, you would, you would real easily deal with them. Uh, there are community clinics. A lot of people don't have ram regular family doctors and they just go to the public clinics. That is okay. You can absolutely do that. It is worth noting for foreigners here, your healthcare is free. Um, it's not just that you have to be a citizen. You don't have to be a resident. You don't have to be anything, right? Health care is free. It's seen as a human right and a, and a huge value to the country. And so it's unthinkable here to think of not providing health care, right? Um, even private clinics, I have found out often when you have people who, who can't afford um, to go there, but the public clinics don't have the resources that are necessary. Uh, often the private clinics will take people anyway and pay out of pocket to take care of them rather than charging out of pocket. It's a completely different mindset. So those things are important. However, it is very important to note a couple things. One, please do not come to Nicaragua and be a drain on the healthcare system. It is a poor country and there are people who truly need access to that free healthcare. I understand that your government almost certainly doesn't provide the same level of healthcare. That's unfortunate. If you're going to be here, find a way to pay into the system or some way or another offset that cost. If you need to use free healthcare for a moment, like that's great find a way to benefit the system to make sure you're paying that back because there just isn't spare resources uh, for people to be doing that here. Um, but mostly you're not going to want to use free healthcare here. It's 
goes without saying, I think the free healthcare here is far inferior, whether in comfort or rapidity of uh, 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 provisioning or whatever, compared to the private healthcare. Private healthcare is absolutely outstanding. It is a minor tourist destination for healthcare. Um, there are some things we can't handle here in country, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but in general, the, the quality of healthcare you hear, first of all, the, the, the public health, while the facilities are darker and, and you know you don't get TVs, like there's a lot of amenities that aren't there, but the quality of healthcare uh, is quite good. Um, but there's, it really does expect familial support, right? They don't provide hospital meals, for example, in the public uh, hospitals. You are expected to have someone bring you soup or whatever, and, and that's just what people do. And it's a great system because uh, it, it allows for the cost of healthcare to be absolutely trivial compared to in, say, the United States, where they have to provide so many services for the people who are in hospital. There are benefits to the American system for sure, um, but it is it's much more expensive uh, and there are, are a lot of caveats to it. So that's how it's done here. So be aware, things like that, you're not gonna, you, you may not have a resource to bring you soup. Uh, so, so you don't wanna end up in that situation, but the private healthcare uh, can be really outstanding, whether it's a smaller healthcare facility. For example, here in Leon, we have a MOXA that's an outstanding facility, really great doctors, really goes out of their way to take care of people. Very, very affordable, uh, right in the middle of the city. Uh, you could go there, but uh, the way that it's handled is uh, kind of a middle ground. If you go to Managua, they have uh, hospitals like Vivian Pellis where you get room service and, and you know really, really good restaurants inside the hospital. Things you would never expect uh, to get in a, in a medical care facility, like really excellent food that you get to pick from a menu, right? Very different experiences than, uh, than most people are used to. So those things are available. It is generally worth paying for the private healthcare. The cost of healthcare is so low that paying for private healthcare is generally very wise. There's gonna be exceptions and it's gonna be a very personal decision for each of you, whether you want to pursue some type of insurance or whether you just wanna pay out of pocket, save up some money and be prepared for some disaster. But it is a different world than the United States where in the US, uh, healthcare can easily become um, life crippling simply from the cost of the health care. Uh, you may need to have a significant number of funds ready ahead of time. Um, you need to have health insurance or else the prices could just go up and up because there's no one to negotiate on your behalf. Uh, you are often stuck getting services that you didn't agree to because you're unconscious or, or whatever. Um, and, and pricing is not available until after the fact. These are things that are unique to the United States. So if you're coming from like Canada, you're probably like, it's, is it really like that in the US? Yes, it really is. Um, so uh, it's a very different world. So in the US, you have to have health insurance. And that insurance is generally very expensive. The cost of health, health insurance in the United States is very commonly higher than the cost of pretty much any care you could possibly need in Nicaragua. You may pay every year, let's say, $10,000 into healthcare, which is a very reasonable amount. At the max, I was paying something like $35,000, $36,000 per year for health insurance that barely covered anything. Never did we actually use it for a family of four. Uh, that was in Texas, and that was like 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, in fact, it was 12 years ago. Um, a lot of people today, that may still seem like a high number, and it was, but paying many hundreds or upwards towards a thousand dollars a month for health insurance in the United States that doesn't cover everything. It just covers certain things. It helps offset things, gives you access to some things, whatever is, is not in any way out of line. And to spend that amount on healthcare per year in Nicaragua would be really difficult, not impossible. Certainly there's ways to do it. Even really major events, like something like a heart attack that may put you in a hospital for a long time, may involve some surgery, would unlikely be to add up to even $10,000 and to spend that per year, while certainly possible if you have a chain of really bad events or something that keeps you in the hospital for a really long time, generally it's not gonna be that bad. We've done some videos to give you some ideas of what healthcare will cost. And it's important to note that you will think, well, but in the US I have health insurance, so if something really tragic happens, yes, generally those health insurance plans, generally not always, have caps and co-pays and other things, and many people end up spending many tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars at a time where they have insurance and they have to worry about events that may cause them to lose insurance so that they are always afraid that they may, may not be able to uh, maintain the job that keeps the insurance and so forth. 
it's a very scary existence where you're dependent completely upon insurance and the insurance is able to drop you at the drop of a hat whether it's you know the the very medical event that happened could be a trigger for no longer having insurance so it makes you wonder can you even classify it as insurance if there's no reason that they're going to pay and even if you completely qualify you are always living in fear that the health insurance company will refuse to pay will simply not pay and not tell you will pay but then the hospital will bill you personally later after the insurance claims to have settled will they claim it is someone else's problem will they claim the hospital shouldn't have done what they did there's endless numbers of ways that they can get out of paying that leaves you with no power to make choices or to determine anything about your own health or potentially to have any idea how much it's going to cost you even after things have happened you don't know what you owe you can live in fear often for the rest of your life on events that should have been taken care of and be over long ago or worse find out that you actually do get told that you owe hundreds of thousands of dollars that you can't possibly pay and you may have very little means to fight that right you have to have a lawyer what are you going to do and do you even owe that money how do you know right it's a very murky system so at the best of times everything about having to pay for your health insurance or health care in the united states is an uncertain and very scary situation even for people who are perfectly healthy and have had nothing happen they can still end up with medical bills that are not theirs it is a relatively common thing i know many people who have been billed for medical care they didn't receive and and it's a very difficult thing to fight luckily there's at least hipaa laws that make it a little bit difficult uh, for a hospital to claim pure accident because they had to get the data from somewhere but those things can be extremely difficult and uh it, it's you're so powerless in those systems here you don't have any of those problems everything that's scary about american medical has gone away now one of the big questions in the the little initial question was you know do people leave Nicaragua when they have major medical do you go back to the United States I would say it's absolutely the opposite and uh, having gone through a recent medical event and a few medical events here because we've been here for a while one thing that we say and my family in the United States consistently say is thank goodness you were already in Nicaragua and weren't in the United States and had to work to get back to Nicaragua in every case that we've encountered we would do almost anything to get to Nicaragua or at least out of the United States before having to receive treatment. There is no situation that I can imagine where I would want to be in the United States for uh, a major event or and absolutely none ever where I would choose to go back to the United States to receive treatment. Those are that is the last place I would want to be within any range of reason for a major medical event. That is the scariest most difficult to get healthcare location that you can reasonably come up with. You could, yes, the Central African Republic, I'm just guessing, has poor healthcare, right? The DRC probably has poor healthcare. Those are places that even if you had a lot of money and, and everything was perfect and in your favor and you had a major medical event, they're probably not the best. I would probably take the US over that if I had insurance, but only if I had an insurance, right? Which I do, but that would be a requirement, right? If I didn't, I would still take those countries and maybe they're still better right I just don't know I'm hypothesizing that I'm trying to come up with something that might be worse but in general it's really hard to imagine a scenario where I would want to have to be treated in the United States beyond like oh I just need a you know a simple test and oh I've got a throat infection what what back you know antibacterial should I take antibiotic should I take sure that's us fine but if something actually important happened I would be terrified to be in the United States and I've been in the US for relatively major things and it was horrible right and it just it consistently is even beyond any payment issues any any of that kind of stuff actual medical care typically sometimes it's great there's great doctors everywhere and the US certainly has some wonderful ones but it is you know a few wonderful ones swimming in drowning in a sea of truly horrible ones the the nature of American healthcare does not encourage good doctors to want to work in that system it encourages really you know uh, people who are really looking to make money uh and and not concerned as much on giving really good health care are the ones who are likely to go into that system because of all the corruption because of all the government intervention because of all the liabilities and certifications and uh you know it, it's a terrible terrible system and and so those who are good doctors who go into that system have to do so fighting against the the trends they have to fight up upstream uh to do that right it's not nothing is aligned in their favor 
he absolutely exists. So I'm not saying all doctors are bad by any stretch. I'm saying that in a system like Nicaragua, people who would make good doctors are very much encouraged from early education all the way through being a doctor to be good doctors. And in the United States, those who would be good doctors, a vast majority of them are shaved off to other careers that are less corrupt, less influenced by the government, less uh, bureaucracy, less unwelcome, right? It's, it's very hard to be a doctor in the United States when the things that people are mostly concerned about aren't the actual medical care, but about the insurance scams, right? And, and to be a doctor where your job is to heal people instead of selling drugs, very different things, right? But there's so much money in doing all the other things in the US that it makes for a very difficult environment for being a good doctor. So you're gonna find that the, there's so many people are encouraged to become doctors in the United States for reasons other than providing medical care. And those that want to provide medical care have that spirit beaten out of them almost entirely. So you, it, those who make it through and are still passionate about being doctors are often really amazing because they're doing it against all odds, right? But here you, you have so many great doctors. Of course, you're still going to have bad ones, but they're the exception rather than the rule, it seems. And very consistently, every time we have to deal with medical care here, there's a, a number of things that are very important. One is it's extremely affordable. Two, it's very rapid and caring. Three, it is sensible. If you're you know, have a broken back, the doctor will come to your house. And the same thing with veterinary care, right? If your dog can't be transported, they come to you. If it's just, you know, oh, we just need to get a shot. The dog has no problem traveling. Of course you go to the vet. But if there's some reason why you can't go to the vet, the vet will come to you because that's what's needed for veterinary care. Well, human care is the same. If you can't be moved, they will come to you no problem. No questions asked. No, like, it's not like a favor. Like that's their job. And it's their job in the US too. Here, once you experience it, it's mind blowing how poor the medical care is in the United States at the, at the very visceral boots on the street level that the individual healthcare providers here are so much more professional and so much more focused on health. It is a completely different feeling. I'm not saying I've never had good doctors in the US. I'm not saying I've never had a meeting with a doctor where I'm like, wow, they really cared about my health. And they did. Yes, I, I have, but that is the exception. It is certainly not the norm. It is not what I get the majority of the time and the results show. Everything in the US is so hard and so expensive. And here, medical, I mean, medical care should be affordable. It needs to be, right? You can't make it a barrier to getting healthy. That's another way of saying you're not providing health care, right? Maybe some, but not, not enough, right? So it's a completely different world. It is not that Nicaragua was, eh, it's a little, it's kind of okay. No, it is a world better of health care. It's not an argument about who's better. It's about, is it even classifiable as healthcare? That's the difference, right? So this is so much better in every little interaction. Maybe not the facade, right? The United States is amazingly good at having big, beautiful, expensive buildings that are bright and flashy. And we associate those things with healthcare. And we don't get a lot of that in Nicaragua. We get some of it, not a lot. Mostly our hospitals are dark and kind of dingy. They're clean, but they're not fancy. And we're trained to look for fancy over healthcare because fancy is cheap and healthcare is hard and fancy is impossible to sue over, but you can sue if you don't like the healthcare you get. And even if you are just suing over something made up, it still goes to court and costs everyone a lot of money. It's very difficult. And the insurance companies get involved again. And often people settle because of the litigious nature of the American system and how hard it is to actually defend yourself. And so there's all kinds of problems that come with healthcare in the United States. And that is one of the huge reasons that really good doctors don't want anything to do with it, right? There's just no reason to care that much. If the public doesn't care enough to make a system that's sensible, why would you fight against it to provide them health care? You have a choice for yourself, and I recommend all other factors being equal, choose good health care for yourself. I know that seems like an obvious statement, but it also seems like an obvious untruth for people who are be in their behavior, right? People will say, of course, I choose good health care if, if I can but their behavior is often to go dramatically out of their way to avoid it, to, to do anything they can to protect themselves from getting good healthcare. So when I say right, that Nicaragua is better in healthcare, I struggle to describe how visceral 
the improvement in the care portion of healthcare beyond the improvement of the health portion of healthcare is. And it's difficult because you look at stats and you say, well, the United States has a lot of good statistics in healthcare. Yes, it does. But if you look, most of those are also associated with really wealthy countries and the availability of resources for things. Like if someone needs uh, medical uh, treatment, there's so much more money in the American system that there's just more money to make those things happen. And remember that uh, if you live in Nicaragua, typically your income, typically, not always, but typically your income is much lower. And so having the option of going anywhere for healthcare is very low. Go give a good example. The United States is world famous for how bad its dentistry is. It's w in a system famous for how bad its healthcare is. Dentistry is famous within that system for being very poor in the United States. It's truly one of the worst uh, dental care systems in the world, which of course, being a child of the UK, also really famous for their bad dental care, all goes together. Many Americans, because of the wealth of the United States, are able to get good dental care by going places like Mexico. Nicaraguans, by and large, cannot afford to go to Mexico, and so the quality of Nicaraguan dental care, for example, is dictated by what's available in Nicaragua, which, by the way, is excellent. In fact, that would be a spot, I would say, that Nicaragua shines even beyond normal uh, healthcare uh, uh, avenues. If you're looking for a place that's going to provide absolutely fantastic dental care, this is the best of, of the people I've spoken to who need advanced dental care. And of the people I've spoken to who are looking at the cost of dental care, Nicaragua seems to lead both. There is nowhere as affordable, there's nowhere doing as good a job, or nowhere uh, dramatically exceeding the good job here. It's very hard to, to measure. This is one area where very consistently the people we have found who put in the effort to find a good dentist who, who didn't just take, you know, the family dentist from someone they know and didn't look into it and didn't evaluate and didn't try to people like people who actually took dentistry as, as something they were really looking to find uh, someone really good. I know of no place where people report the kind of excellent results that they get here and certainly no place that do it at this kind of price. Mexico has a lot of great dentistry. That is a specialty that they offer, but the cost is much higher and the results are seemingly not quite as as high so but but when you're looking at the united states when you're looking at the results you're looking at a culture where people have access to healthcare from all over the world right i know people from the united states who've gone to colombia who've gone to switzerland who've gone to mexico and other places that provide that really excellent healthcare. and the thing that makes the american healthcare system work is the ability to leave the united states so because of your economic power to choose where you're gonna get healthcare, it makes Americans healthier than their healthcare system can provide for. Nicaraguans don't have that. So when you get healthy Nicaraguans, almost always it's because Nicaragua is providing that healthcare, which is an amazing statement. If you're an American or Canadian or a Western European with those kinds of budgets, with that kind of resource uh, accessibility, which can include just having a flexible passport, living in Nicaragua gives you both the benefits of the Nicaraguan system itself, but also the benefits that the American system of being able to go where there's good healthcare specific to your needs exists. So if you need a very specific surgery that's only done, say, in Honduras, the average Nicaraguan would struggle to go and get that surgery. But the average American or Canadian or European who's living in Nicaragua or living in the United States could go to Honduras without thinking. It would be so easy because their passport is just accepted. Flights are super cheap. Many of the flights pass through the US, so only those with US viable passports or visas have an option of going through. There's a lot of factors. So those things are very important to evaluate that when, when the US says, well, but yeah, you can say our healthcare is terrible, but look at the results. You're looking at the results of a system where people are very, if you know people above a certain wealth threshold, all of them talk about how they leave the country for at least some portion of their healthcare. Not when they have a cough, not when they sprain their foot, not when they break their, their finger, but when they're looking at serious conditions and serious surgeries, routinely those above a certain wealth threshold are leaving the country or those above an even higher wealth threshold are bringing doctors from wherever they need and providing their own healthcare system that operates separate from the country. So my take is that Nicaragua, like most countries in the region, and by far most countries in Europe, simply outclasses the United States to a scale that you can't reasonably discuss both things as being healthcare. Nicaragua may not be in line with uh, France or in Italy for healthcare or Japan, 
but it certainly falls onto the serious healthcare side of the world, not to the American, Canadian, British side of the world, where healthcare takes a back seat with heavy funding and very low results. It's anything but that here. So all that, yes, healthcare in Nicaragua, you want to be here or somewhere in the region. I'd be perfectly happy being in Panama. I'd be even better being in Colombia, be excellent being in Mexico. All kinds of things throughout the region are very good. You don't, this is not to single out Nicaragua as being the best. They're not, they're good. They're probably doing the best with their resources versus how good they're doing ratio. But that's not necessarily what you're looking for when you just want the best, best healthcare, you want the absolute best. If you could pick and choose the, the weather of one country, the healthcare of another country, the resources of you would pick the income of America, the healthcare of Colombia, the you know freedom of expression of Nicaragua, like you would pick and choose different pieces where you can do different things that all together when it, when it comes to a whole ends up being the thing that you want. You would definitely take Nicaraguan baseball, right? but not their soccer. Uh, so, so that's important. Mexican soccer, right? Argentinian soccer. Uh, so, so yeah, it's not the best, but it's certainly good enough for most people. Now there's two other important questions. I'm going to try to jump to everything. The next question or aspect of that question was what about acute cancer care? So I do not know people who are getting cancer care here in Nicaragua. I am going to surmise that there is very little on oncological, oncological oncological cancer care here in Nicaragua if you have cancer currently and have a good plan of treatment you can certainly talk to doctors here ahead of time which you should do if you have any major medical uh, issue and determine what Nicaragua's ability to care for that is and where that care is right if you were to have cancer and need to be treated in Nicaragua I guarantee you would want to be treated in Managua it is the center of the country it's just not that large of a country that outlying areas can have really strong medical care but that's not true for everything. If you're gonna you know, have a cardiac condition, you could be fine in many outlying cities, but still make sure that there is a cardiologist that you like and that you feel does a really good job in that city. So don't, don't just assume that every city's gonna have one and that they're gonna be so good that you love them. That's gonna be an important part of your life. So evaluate that or evaluate how far away one is. But for most things, you're gonna get your care in Managua. But as a doctor said recently, it's only 90 to 120 minutes to come in from mostly outlying cities to Managua. When it comes to healthcare, that's a distance you travel in the United States for healthcare as well without thinking twice. So think about under most conditions, as long as it's not super acute and life-threatening, that if you just need to see a cancer specialist from time to time, going into Managua is not a big deal in any way whatsoever. So evaluate those things on your own. But uh, if you can get the care that you need, Managua is almost certainly where it's going to be. If you can't, then you have a couple of options. One is obviously the option is not to live in Nicaragua. If you have a, uh, a need where you got to see a doctor all the time and it is really uh, life threatening or really significant, then you're going to want to locate in a place that has the very specific care that you need. And that might be as simple as Costa Rica or, or El Salvador, which have a lot more medical facilities than Nicaragua does. Uh, but if those don't have it, very likely you're looking at places like Mexico or Colombia, where they have really extensive medical facilities, or of course, Brazil as well. Uh, they're less famous for that. Argentina, you would expect quite a lot. Um, Chile, quite a lot. Uh, so you have a number of places that have a lot of really excellent healthcare that you can pick from, um, that you can look at and see if you like their programs, you like their cities, you like their weather, you can put something together. Maybe it's not gonna be as ideal as Nicaragua is for you, and I'm sorry that it can't be for absolutely everyone, but if you have healthcare concerns of that level, if Nicaragua has the resources for them, this is a great place to be. But if it doesn't, probably you don't wanna to try to figure out a way to live in Nicaragua anyway. Um, those who are from Nicaragua have to. Right, so people are figuring those things out, but as an expat, it is probably a showstopper for choosing a country, but there are amazing options within Latin America that and some of them very close that almost certainly will offer whatever it is you need. A little bit of research will go a long way on that. But if you have an issue that is less acute and you only need to see a doctor once or twice a year, um, you need to have access to one, maybe it's for emergencies, but an emergency is not life-threatening within the next few hours kind of way and you can get on a plane and go wherever you need to go. Most cancer would be like that. 
uh, if you're in remission or whatever, then um, you may easily want to look at living in a place like Nicaragua or Nicaragua itself and having a cancer uh, facility that you've been working with and you have a relationship with in Mexico or Colombia, like we said, those are all very accessible. Mexico is only a few hours away by plane. If you live in Managua, you can actually be in Mexico in right about two hours, two and a half hours. It depends where you're going. Cancun, a little bit closer than Mexico City. If you're going to be going to El Salvador, which is another medical uh, treatment tourist destination, they very easily will have the care that you need as well. That can be quite a bit under two hours, maybe an hour and a half, maybe even less than that to fly there. And driving is an option as well. Uh, it's so close. Um, if you're looking at Colombia, it's a little bit farther away, depending on the flights, or maybe just a little bit more expensive. But you can fly through Panama and be there pretty quickly, or take the bus to Costa Rica and be there directly from there as well. So you have these options. In a region where your countries are very small, this is how it has to be handled. In the United States, you don't have to do this because you have states that border other states and you simply go from state to state and it's all within one country. Here, our states are uh, very small and independent, so going between nations is how you handle the same thing, but we treat it much the same way as going between states in the US. And you must think of it that way because you're talking about a range of the same amount of people, same geographic area that you're covering. It would be much like living in the US, but you have to think of it slightly differently. Instead of thinking of Nicaragua as being like the United States, in this context, you need to think of Nicaragua as being more like a, a an Arkansas or a New York state, which are about the same size and about the same. And it's more like the population of Arkansas. It's in between, uh, but it's like that. And using Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, Belize, all those, they're all super close. They're like a bunch of bordering or nearly bordering states. And we generally have really easy movement between them, especially if you have a US passport, Canadian passport or whatever. So you have to think of them in this context, like states that are nearby and going between them for different things is no big deal. And if you're going to one that's outside the CA4, it can count as your border run as well. Check those episodes to learn about. We're not gonna go into that here. All right, so that's, that's how a lot of people treat the care here. If it's something that you can travel for, you just travel for it, right? It's easier than traveling from the US. It's cheaper living here and going for the US. Your doctors here are more prepared to interface. You don't have those problems. In the US, because of the health insurance system and because of some other reasons, it can be very difficult for your doctor to uh, give you any clearance or work with doctors outside the country, work with you working with doctors outside the country. That it could happen, but it can be very problematic. Here, it's very different. If you're living in Nicaragua and you have a cardiologist in Brazil, for example, and you wanna to go to Sao Paulo to meet with them, your doctor here will happily interface with them and they will text you directly. You don't have to go through special channels. They will give you their number. You'll talk to them. You'll have a conversation. You'll share files back and forth. They'll talk to your doctor in Brazil. Everything will be easy and very straightforward. You don't have that barrier of, oh, I'm sorry, that's in another country, that's outside of our healthcare system, whatever, and then not being willing to work with them. And not that they will not work outside their healthcare systems, generally they will, or at least a lot of the time they will in the US, but working outside the country, they often will not, unless they're simply taking you on from an emergency that happened abroad. That, of course, they will. But if you are voluntarily using a doctor that is overseas, you normally get a lot of pushback uh, from your doctors in the US often to the point where they will simply uh, act as though you had an event there and not do anything to interact with those doctors and not participate in your healthcare in any meaningful way. So, so those things are very different, much like you were dealing with doctors within a single health system in the United States where they're all going to share information, they're going to happily work together, and they're all focused on the goal of your healthcare, not on maintaining the corporate structure and their profit margins. It really is hard to describe how different the world of healthcare is outside of the United States. I think through all that, I managed to cover all of my points, kind of merging them into one, but I'm gonna highlight it just in case it isn't super clear. For a lot of things, what happens here is you're going to choose a medical facility in another country. Colombia is a prime one from here simply because Colombia is famous for its world-class healthcare and being extremely affordable, which is something that's very important to pretty much everyone, but especially people who are living in Nicaragua. Uh, if you were to have really, really serious uh, tumors, cancer, uh, you know, really serious heart attack that like they, they just, some really unique thing, that's what they're expected to have uh, an array of, of really amazing surgeons with specialty because they're the uh, epicenter of those researches uh, in, in the region, right? So um, going there and getting really amazing uh, healthcare facilities, really amazing 
doctors, consulting doctors, that would be a problem here. There's, while they're, the doctors are great, the number that can consult on a specialty is relatively low simply because it's a small market, it's a small place. They can't call in another city because there isn't another city, right? So it's, um, uh, it's important to get to a place that's much larger. The city of Bogota and the city of Medellin are both larger than the country of Nicaragua. Um, Bogota is three times the size of the country. Uh, so perspective, it's, it's a quite different situation. But those things are very easy. Traveling to another country that's, you know, only a few hundred miles away is surprisingly easy. That sounds so crazy to Americans because other countries are so far away, but they're not here. It's, it's all just part of the region. Um, and so thinking of healthcare very differently is important. And across the board, that's true. Everything when it comes to Nicaragua is thinking about your healthcare differently. And it's very important when you're here to actually do that because it's not just about convincing you that this is something you want to give a try, uh, that is good. But if you're living here like me, it is sometimes really important to think about healthcare differently because how you're going to interact with it and how you're going to get the best benefits out of it are going to come from embracing how it works, learning how to use the pharmacy without going to the doctor first for every little thing, using doctors more broadly, asking for more advice, expecting them to do what makes sense for you, being reasonable to things like doctors and nurses coming to your home. In-home care is really major. And I recently uh, got to experience a little bit where a doctor and a number of nurses went and did 24 seven care in a home and so affordable. I mean, now that's acute care, right? You're having eight hour shifts, three people all day. You're literally hiring a staff of three medical professionals uh, to work really challenging hours ad hoc and that came up to under $100 per day after all expenses. That's for the doctor and the nurses. That's not per person, right? That's total about $33, just under $33 per person for that day. And so if you needed them for two days, three days, four days, that would just be $100, $200, $300, slightly less. Like that's so affordable in the United States, you could not get a single shift for that. In many cases, not a single hour for that. Um, and, and you'd have to pay travel time to come to your house and all kinds of things that, that don't exist. This was complete coverage around the clock with overlap. So they could hand off information and, and taking notes and interfacing with the hospital and traveling with you when you need to go places like that kind of care is so available here. And they, they have no idea. They would be just so in shock to find out that the United States doesn't do that because how do you provide quality care? How do you provide affordable care if you're not willing to do those things? And why wouldn't you be willing to do, do those things? That's what it's, that's how you provide healthcare. And when I lived in Ukraine, it was the same thing. My daughter got sick, not a huge deal. Immediately a doctor and a nurse came to our apartment and treated her. It was so convenient for us. It didn't expose other people to whatever she had, probably the flu. And uh, they were able to take care of her so comfortably and, and quickly and easily. It, it was so much better as a healthcare uh, uh, interaction that we we were so shocked and that was after years of living abroad but we don't get sick that often knock on wood so we we're constantly not needing to interface with these major things we've had some events we've been to the doctors in france we've had to be in the hospital in greece a bit we've had to do some in italy ukraine certainly here in nicaragua um and obviously the united states so i mean a lot of countries we've dealt with their medical systems but we've had some that we've lived in that we never had to panama spain uh, Romania, I don't think we ever visited a doctor in any of those countries. So there's some that we don't have that exposure to, but many we do. And um, of, of those, when we've lived outside the United States, I've never encountered one that didn't shock me how affordable and good the healthcare was. I'm so conditioned to what it's like back in the United States. So to, to sum up the question, yes, in general, medicine operates mostly like you're used to in the United States with important tweaks. No, no one in their right mind would go to the United States to get healthcare unless they had a very specific situation such as pre-existing uh, healthcare setup, really amazing insurance that they're lacking anywhere else, uh, a, a family support system that they're able to use there and not somewhere else. Of course there's reasons, but it, all other things being equal, simply the quality of the healthcare, no one would ever even have it on their radar to consider going to the United States as an option for healthcare. Nicaragua would not be the destination you would pick because of healthcare, but it is not a space that you should avoid because of the healthcare. You should say, this is an excellent healthcare system that's very affordable. And should I need something beyond its capability, I have relatively easy access to a world of high quality healthcare nearby uh, in, in all these different countries. 
and you should do some research and you should be prepared and, and have a plan in place. And that's what people do. But you have access to this world of healthcare. And as long as you don't have one of those specialty situations or need to get some voluntary surgery, if you're going to get plastic surgery, I wouldn't do that in Nicaragua, right? You would travel for that same kind of, you know, that's sometimes that stuff is like that. Uh, but if you need normal everyday care, absolutely excellent here in Nicaragua, very affordable, very approachable. And a lot of outlying areas are, are getting big uh, facelifts in their medical care now. Uh, we Willy way up north recently got a new hospital. Leon has one of the oldest hospitals in the country. We're getting the largest and obviously at the time it's built, it will be the newest hospital in the country, which is expected to open this year, uh, possibly in the coming months. Uh, it's on the other side of the city. It's, I'm really hoping that we can get a tour of it is a major facility and should be the largest in the country, which is very exciting. We are a very large city, but we're not my, not, not Managua by any stretch, uh, but we don't have as many hospitals. So uh, replacing our downtown one with one just slightly outside of downtown that is so large and, and closer to the highway so it can service the outlying communities better is, is just amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing, everyone is looking forward to seeing what that's going to do. We have a lot of those kinds of investments happening in the country. We're constantly seeing new medical going up. And so what has been pretty good is turning more and more into really excellent and so I think there's a bright future for healthcare here as well. Of course, those are public hospitals, so may not be something you'd actually use as an expat watching my channel, but potentially it is, especially as the new ones go in, you're more likely to use them than you were before. Uh, so just overall, we're very happy with the healthcare here. We have had to deal with some pretty major things here over the years um, for multiple people, and we are consistently happy with it. And never once have we considered the possibility of going to the US, but every time we're in the US, we always have a strategy for getting back to Nicaragua in an emergency so that we can make sure that we're dealing with our healthcare here. And my father is the best reference, right? My father worries that something will happen to us while we're outside of Nicaragua, because his biggest concern is how would we get back to make sure we're able to get good healthcare. Thanks for joining me, like, and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. If you would be so kind as to share the show on social media, whether it's Reddit or LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. Uh, and as always, tell your friends, tell someone about the show, nudge them in the direction of, uh, of watching an episode, let them give it a try. And uh, I'll see all of you tomorrow.